geology's hidden map maker. It exists not merely as paper and ink, but as a key. A key to a world impossibly ancient, a world of deep time and slow, inexorable violence. Before this map, our understanding of the ocean floor was a vague, featureless cartoon, a simple, bowl-like basin of mud and darkness. But this document, this was different. It depicted a world beneath the waves as dynamic and complex as the one above. Vast, alien mountain ranges snaked across the abyssal plains. Canyons plunged into chasms deeper than any on land. And most disturbingly, a colossal jagged scar seemed to wrap around the entire planet, a seam stitching the world together. This wasn't just cartography, it was a revolution. The map didn't just chart the unknown, it whispered a terrifying and beautiful new story about the Earth itself. It suggested the planet wasn't static, not a solid, finished sphere, but a living, breathing thing. A thing whose very skin was in constant motion, breaking apart and reforming in a geological ballet spanning hundreds of millions of years. When this new vision of the deep ocean began to circulate, it was a seismic event in the world of geology. It forced a generation of scientists to question the very bedrock of their knowledge. It was the missing piece of a puzzle they didn't even know they were trying to solve, hinting at forces that could move entire continents. The implications were staggering, the intellectual audacity breathtaking. It was, without exaggeration, one of the most important geological documents of the early 20th century. But who was the mind behind it? Whose eyes first saw this pattern in the chaotic noise of raw data? Whose hand drew the lines that would redefine our planet? The official histories would point you to the celebrated Professor Alastair Finch, head of the Department of Geophysics at a prestigious university, a man whose name was etched onto the papers that presented this work to the world. But the genius, the true architect of this revelation, was not Professor Finch. It was a woman he employed, a name you will not find in the textbooks. Her name was Eleonora Vance. Eleonora was not a professor. She wasn't even officially a scientist, not in the eyes of the establishment. Her title was a computer or data analyst one of a small army of women hired for their meticulousness and patience, tasked with processing the mountains of raw data that male scientists brought back from their expeditions. They were the human machinery of science, expected to calculate, not to think. But Eleonora Vance thought. She saw more than just numbers. While her colleagues saw endless columns of depth soundings, dredge sample reports, and seismic readings, Eleonora saw a story. She came to the university, not with a pedigree, but with a ferocious intellect and a passion for patterns. She had spent her youth tracing the fossil lines in the hills behind her home, seeing the layers of stone, not as rock, but as pages in Earth's diary. This job was her only door into the world she so desperately wanted to join. So she worked. She worked with a focus that bordered on obsession. Long after the gas lamps in the main halls were extinguished, Eleonora would be there, hunched over her vast tables, pinning scraps of data to continent-sized charts. The data came from everywhere. Naval expeditions, transatlantic cable-laying surveys, fledgling seismic studies. Each was a tiny, isolated pinprick of information. To everyone else, it was just noise. But Eleonora began to connect them. She wasn't just plotting points. She was weaving a tapestry. She noticed consistencies where others saw randomness. A specific type of basalt rock appearing in a dredge sample off the coast of Africa. And then, impossibly, the same type appearing in a sample from the coast of South America. She saw that the youngest parts of the ocean floor seemed to cluster around that enormous planet-spanning scar she was beginning to outline, that great mid-ocean ridge. 
older rock, meanwhile, was always found further away, near the continents. It was a crazy idea, a fringe theory at the time, but the data seemed to be screaming it at her. The seafloor was not ancient. It was being born, right there in the middle of the ocean, and pushing everything else apart. She was, in essence, discovering the mechanism for continental drift, years before it would be accepted. Her map was the proof. It wasn't just a drawing. It was an argument, a meticulously researched, data-driven argument for a new Earth. And after two years of relentless clandestine work, her masterpiece was complete. It was beautiful, terrifying, and she knew, with every fiber of her being, that it was true. All that was left was to show it to the man in charge, Professor Finch, and change the world.